Good afternoon, folks. We need to go over a public request by the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center and why I am not thrilled about the proposition or ask from the government here. They're asking for comment on potential changes to the space weather scales, how they rate solar flares, proton storms, and geomagnetic storms. I really don't think any of them need a change, but there's one in particular I really hope never changes. Their first scale is the radio blackout scale. Honestly, I feel like this is the least important. It only matters for high frequency radio communications, and as long as we still get the A, B, C, M, and X class rating for the flares that cause these radio blackouts, I kind of don't care if they change this. They don't need to, but it wouldn't bother me. Same for the proton storm ratings. I think this is about perfect as it is for its intended purpose, but again, if they changed it, it wouldn't bother me too much, just as long as the FAA can adequately gauge the risk to polar flights. It's whatever. But when it comes to the KP index and the geomagnetic storm scale, the G number, they really better not change this one. This is what we use to determine how much of a whack the Earth took during CME impact, coronal hole stream, or interplanetary magnetic field impact within the heliospheric current sheet. While I don't doubt there may be another valid way to measure and report geomagnetic storms, the problem would be a continuity for comparison's sake. What do I mean by that? We know exactly what to expect from solar wind data in terms of the KP index and G storm level, and we've been able to use that to demonstrate that during the ongoing magnetic pole shift, less and less from the sun is causing more and more disruption to Earth. So far, since the officials have stopped giving us data on how weak the magnetic field has become, we have used that KP index and G-storm level and the auroral extent and the atmospheric changes over long time periods to do our best to step in and estimate the magnetic field loss. The truth is that the atmospheric news comes from the journals and is fairly rare. The auroral extent is only useful during bigger events but the most consistent tool we have is to compare the KP and G-storm indices to the solar wind data against similar events in the past. If they change the KP index and G-storm level scales, our ability to do this will diminish and will destroy one of the key tools we use to gauge how vulnerable our planet is in this ongoing shift. This is why I answered their call for comment and expressed they shouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't mind if you did the same. Trust me. Indirectly trying to gauge the magnetic pole shift progression is one of the harder jobs I have and I would like it to not get any harder. Subscribe for daily updates and I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe everyone.